Hello everyone, I am John Bjerling, Associate Narrative Director on Star Wars Outlaws, and I'm here to break down the lore, references, and any other Star Wars details you may have missed in our latest gameplay walkthrough. Hey, new record! Kay is a fan of arcade games and has been playing this Raven 6 space shooter for years. You can find it and other games scattered throughout the galaxy. Kay grew up around cantinas and learned from an early age that they're both places to lie low and to find new opportunities. As Kay travels throughout the galaxy, it's always a good idea to head to the local cantina when looking for intel or work. Kowakian monkey lizards can be found everywhere in the Outer Rim, and they're used as pets, thieves, and even food. But few are as privileged as salacious bee crumb in Jabba's palace. Many merchants will use protocol droids to handle customers from every corner of the galaxy who don't speak basic or Hatiz. Kay can bypass the droids since she's fluent in Hatiz, and she can use this to talk her way out of or directly into some tense situations. The Trailblazer is an EML 850 light freighter from the Clone Wars. Its reinforced hull was built to ensure safe transport into any kind of environment but the high material costs ruined its chances for mass production. The ship is a rare prototype from a bygone era that had a life of its own before ending up in Kay's hands. Hey, Andy. Hi, Kay. Akiva space. Akiva is an outer rim planet that the Empire controls via the local government. Normally, the Empire doesn't have a presence there, but like with many other remote worlds, they carry out occasional audits with support from the Imperial military. This is Kay Vess on board the Trailblazer. I'm coming to help. Akiva is orbited by an asteroid field made up of the remains of a comet called Kinro. Legend has it that several Jedi banded together and used the Force to tear it apart, but most people think that's just a myth. Traveling in the Outer Rim is dangerous, and spacers, smugglers, and syndicate freighters are all at risk of being attacked by pirates. Most pirates are part of local gangs that operate in a specific sector, and they usually only care if a mark looks valuable or not. Pirate ships, like the Scourge and Junkross, are cheap and expendable. Pirates typically steal whatever they can get their hands on, and they often rely on scare tactics and aggression to get their score. The Pike Syndicate has shipping lanes across the Outer Rim, making their freighters hot targets for pirates and rival syndicates. Due to Kay helping defend this ship, she has improved her reputation with the Pikes and their underboss, Gorak. Spooling up the hyperdrive. Growing up in the Workers District of Cantabite, Kay always dreamed of being able to get off-world and travel the galaxy. After taking the Trailblazer and honing her piloting skills, she's finally able to jump across the galaxy in search of the freedom she's always wanted for her and Nyx. Kay is entering the legendary Moss Isley on Tatooine, but this planet is large with more than one settlement for you to discover. It's been a privilege to recreate iconic locations such as Chalman's Cantina, while also expanding on the world with locations that are completely new. Room for one more? Here we see Kay about to engage in a game of Kessel Sabak, which is her favorite card game in the galaxy. To win, Kay will need to keep an eye out for cheaters, or maybe even cheat herself. <laughs> Tatooine is the home of Jabba the Hutt, and after the Hutt cartel faced the surprising loss of their council, Jabba is at the height of his power in the criminal underworld. Following the destruction of the Death Star, the Empire has increased their presence on Tatooine, but everybody knows it's Jabba's domain. The other syndicates stick to the shadows. K-Speeder is an S57 Cardinal, a multi-terrain speeder bike that's perfect for explorers. This speeder is both reliable and moddable, and Kay can call it from afar using a control module to give her and Nyx a chance to rest their feet. Imperial shuttles are a dead giveaway that there's some Imperial activity nearby. Sometimes that might add further risk, but in other cases it can be a great opportunity for a scoundrel. Some Jawas on Tatooine travel around in sand crawlers, offering trade deals for whoever happens to be nearby. The sand crawlers were originally built for mining operations, 
but were co-opted by the Jawas as a way to hold and transport salvage. These flyhorn lizards can be found all around Tatooine's deserts. The lizards use their tails and horns to catch condensation and smaller insects while keeping cool by hiding in the sand. Some moisture farmers use the lizards as an indication of their yield. The huts are present outside the main cities too, and have established compounds all over Tatooine. Depending on your reputation level, you can walk right in or be turned away from Syndicate territory. So your interactions with these locations and the syndicates within will change throughout the game. Busy place. Kay and Nyx have been thieving together for years, and their incredibly close bond means that they are able to support each other in any situation. Nyx, attack! Hmm? Good job, buddy. Nix, do you sense anyone close? Sutta. Kay is using a well-worn VM-19 heavy blaster with a unique ability to switch modules. Here, we see Kay use the stun mode to take out this guard instantly and quietly. Easy. All right, let's see what we have here. This is Kay's data spike, which she can use for picking locks. When not in use, yes, she conceals it by wearing it as a hairpin. Wait, Quint, that sheriff from Wayfar used to work for the huts? I should talk to her. Uh -huh. Oh, come on! No, no, no. These enforcer droids are widely used by syndicates as cheap and expendable firepower. They are very dangerous, but Kay can use her blaster's ion module to disrupt them, as we see here. You may recognize these as Massives, a native Tatooine predator with thick armored hides, sharp spines, and a dangerous bite. They were first domesticated by the Tusken, but even the Hut Cartel Beastmasters used them to guard their territory. We need a quick exit! And here we see the iconic Gamorians that were hired by Jabba himself as his most reliable guards. They are incredibly powerful and dangerous, particularly at close range. Here we see Kay switching to her power module to try and take them out before fleeing. Tatooine will feature its iconic twin suns, and you'll be able to witness some beautiful sunrises and sunsets on your journey across the desert planet. There we are. Next to the sheriff's office, we see some banthas, which are typically domesticated herd animals used for their milk, meat, leather, and transport. Banthas are omnivores and can sustain energy without food or water for long stretches of time. We see Kay arriving at Wayfar Station, where moisture farmers come to sell water, socialize, and buy equipment. Tatooine is known to be filled with outlaws preying on these farmers, which is why we see a stacked bounty board on the wall to the sheriff's office. Eagle-eyed viewers may even spot Kay's picture on the board. You again. Sheriff Quint is a weak way and former pirate who had a lot of success due to her gunslinger skills. She eventually turned away from her old lifestyle and towards the law, using her skills to help the people of Wayfar. Quint is one of the experts in our game, so Kay can agree to help her out, and in exchange, Quint will help Kay develop her skills with the blaster. You want to die first? Fine by me. This is another look at Tushara, the new Savannah Moon created in collaboration between Massive Entertainment and Lucasfilm Games. The strong winds on the moon wear down the naturally occurring amberine. This can create ramps for Kay and Nyx to take advantage of on the speeder. Here we get another glimpse of the lush, dense jungle planet of Akiva, which has been fully realized visually for the first time. Akiva has a very interesting history, 
and that's something we were excited to explore with Kay and Nix. Kay grew up brawling in cantinas and sneaking around as a thief, so she can hold her own in combat. We even see her take down a death trooper with an electroshock prod. And here, we see a range of alien species being brought together by Sabak. This includes a Galushan, a Zabrak, and Trandoshan. You'll encounter a range of different species scattered across the Outer Rim. Kay and Nyx are betting on a Fathir race, being broadcast live from her hometown of Cantobite. Nyx loves following the race on the holo projector. These are Aglis flyers, native to Tushara. They have a habit of stealing anything they can get their hands on, hoarding the items in remote nests. The Tusharans use wind fishing nets to capture them for their meat. In addition to Kay's blaster, she'll learn to use some other weapons when she needs some additional firepower such as this Imperial Z6 rotary blaster cannon. And finally, here we see a Rancor, a reptilian species that originally hailed from the planet Dathomir. As fans will know, Rancors are extremely dangerous, so they present quite a threat to someone like Kay. And that's some of the things that you may have missed in our latest gameplay walkthrough. The team is hard at work crafting this galactic scoundrel adventure and we're excited for players to experience the Outer Rim as Kay and her companion Nyx on August 30th. If you're willing to take the risk, the galaxy is full of opportunity.